All right, so here we're talking about free fall. So in free fall, what's going on is you have an object that's been released above the earth, near the surface of the earth, and then it's going to fall. Um, basically, if it's falling without anything attached to it, then it is in free fall. We're going to talk about free fall, quote, without air resistance and then with air resistance. Now, you can talk about free fall as happening without air resistance or with negligible air resistance only if your object is fairly massive, or fairly dense, relatively dense, and is only falling for a short period of time, relatively. So an example of that might be flipping a coin. So once the coin is in the air, it's not suspended by anything, even though it might be moving up through the air, it is still considered to be in free fall because, you know, while you've given it an initial upward velocity, it's accelerating downwards. All right, so the acceleration essentially on this object is a downward acceleration um, because the force of gravity is the only thing acting on it. Gravity acts downwards, so as you know, the coin is going to slow down, reach a peak, and then basically um, accelerate downwards again until it hits the floor or the hand or whatever. So that object is in free fall, and we can neglect air resistance because um, a coin is fairly dense, and uh, it's gonna the, and it's pretty compact, so the air is not gonna affect it much. You might contrast that with a piece of paper, even though it's only dropping a short distance, it catches the air. It's not compact. It's not dense. So a piece of paper will have a lot of air resistance, but a coin only a little bit. All right. So another example. Here we've got people. People are pretty dense, and if they were only falling a short distance, you could ignore air resistance. But these guys are skydiving, so they're going to have quite a lot of air resistance acting on them. All right? So here we've got a more formal definition here. Any object suspended above Earth's surface without support is in free fall. So it's going to accelerate downwards. The acceleration due to gravity is always the same. And in fact, we have a special value for it. I'll just write it off to the side here. It's been calculated by scientists to be, we call it little g, and it's about 10 meters per second squared. That's the value of the acceleration due to gravity. All right. So anything in free fall is going to be accelerating at that rate, unless, of course, it has air resistance to counteract the force of gravity. All right. Otherwise, that's the rate of acceleration. So if we ignore air resistance without air resistance, even with air resistance, the acceleration due to gravity is still that. But there's going to be a counteracting force which we have to account for, which is the air resistance. All right. So that's that. What's it look like as a drawing? Well, essentially, here's a rock. Let's suppose it's falling through the atmosphere, falling through the air. Bam. The rock accelerates downwards. There's no upward force on that rock. It's in free fall, and we're ignoring air resistance. Air resistance is very small. Now let's suppose we have the same rock, and it's been falling for long enough now that there's a significant amount of air resistance, um, and now we can't ignore it anymore. So free fall with air resistance would look something like this. You have the downward force of gravity, but now you have an upward force from the air resistance, and that's going to start to slow down the acceleration. We're still speeding up. It's still falling faster than it was before, but the rate of acceleration slows down. So we've got this smaller force going up and a larger force going down, and that's free fall with some air resistance. Okay? So that's the basic idea of free fall without air resistance and then free fall with air resistance. All right, the air resistance will slow down the rate of acceleration. Now we have another term here that we want to talk about, and that's terminal velocity. This is a special case of free fall with air resistance. Now, if something falls long enough um, through the air, it will eventually reach a point of maximum velocity. This point of maximum velocity occurs when the force of air resistance is basically equal to the force of gravity or completely counteracts the force of gravity. So the rock stops accelerating. 
it's no longer changing its speed. It's reached a maximum velocity, and it will not fall any faster than that. So it's it's basically at its what's called terminal velocity, its fastest velocity. Now that occurs when the upward force of air resistance is equal to the downward force of gravity. So the forces count balance out, and this thing is essentially, we'll talk about this later, but this is essentially an equilibrium. All right, the forces cancel out. So there is no acceleration acting on that object. It's falling at a constant velocity, and that is called the terminal velocity. If you think back to that picture of the skydivers, they will reach their terminal velocity fairly quickly, actually, and they will no longer be getting faster. All right, so that's what that means. Terminal velocity, it actually has you might have thought like terminal, like terminal illness or something. It sounds kind of like a, what do you call that? Like a ominous term. Maybe it means like the velocity at which you die or something like that. But no, that's not what it means. It's not like a terminal patient. It's terminal as in like the end or the fastest or the most velocity you can get. All right, cool.